I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. My beautiful nerds and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Down Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. I know, I know. Listen, I'm not going to get into it. Today's episode is a really big one because it's a bunch of different side quests and I've been working on this episode for quite some time. But before we begin, let me go ahead and show you something. Uh, why my beanie is on and why it has to stay on. And that, my friends, is because of this. Um... <laughs> So if you really want to see what's going on in my head, you guys are going to have to go check out Twitch, unless you're watching this in the future, in which case I might have different hair. But anyways, um, I can't, the green screen, I, my head, let's just jump into this episode. Today's episode is going to be Side Quest Central. We're going to be tackling as much as we possibly can in the amount of time that we have, which is about an hour together today. Uh, and we're going to try to just knock out as many of these assignments and things that we can. And the first one that we're going to do is the In-7 Eclipse Smuggling Depot. We're going to land on the planet Deratar and recover the smuggled cargo. Now, the whole time that we're doing this, by the way, we are going to be scanning every planet, doing everything that we possibly can. If you picked up the uh, the Shadowbreaker stuff and that's done and you can get those deliveries as often as you would like, you, then you don't really have to scan planets anymore because you can do that trick where you just set the date and then you go collect the thing and you'll, you, as long as you're willing to do that, you can be swimming in resources and it's not a big deal and you'll never have to. Resources are infinite in this game, whereas credits are not. So that's a decision that you have to that you have to make. So anyways, we're going to head to the N7 uh the N7 mission that we have right now, which again is over in the far year system hourglass nebula. Let's do it. First side quest. Before we leave there though, we are in the Sawio uh cluster and we might as well just go ahead and get 100% completion while we're at it. Also, highly recommend scanning the planet Ansus because it, not only does it have anim element zero, but it's also a rich planet. So you're going to be finding a ton of resources by scanning this place. And luckily for us, it's it's in the Hourglass Nebula, the Shadow Broker stuff. So we're already here, which is why, of course, we're heading to Faryar, where we're going to secure the smuggled cargo. But first, we need to scan the entire system. And I would highly recommend that you stock up on probes before you come to the far yard section or system because almost every single planet here is a mineral rich planet and you can get so many resources by coming here. But we're heading to Daratar and I want to show you a trick for this planet. Cerberus hotspot detected. The planet Daratar in the far yard system is a suspected eclipse smuggling site. Cerberus is interested in obtaining the materials kept at this site. Operatives will be paid handsomely for any intact crate retrieved from the site. Be aware that Eclipse would rather see the cargo destroyed than lose it to a rival organization. So we need to rescue or save as many of these crates as possible and stop the Ymir mechs from destroying them. Literally doesn't matter who you bring, so we'll just go ahead and bring Garrus and Miranda. We also, for the trick that we're going to use for this this side quest, we want to make sure we're using the missile launcher. Now, if you're lower level and you're doing this earlier in the game, this particular mission, you can actually use the cane. There's going to be three Ymir mechs that we need to kill before they destroy crates for this mission. There's going to be 20 crates. We want all of those crates left to get the max reward that we can from this side quest. And it's actually possible at lower levels on insanity to use the cane and it will destroy all three mechs. Unfortunately, because of uh, the this, because of our high level, we are not going to be able to do that. So we're going to have to do this a little bit cheesier of a way. And the way we're going to do that is by using the missile launcher. And you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about real soon. So we have these Ymir mechs, three of them, but we're not even going to worry. Trust me, we're not even going to worry about fighting them, and it's going to be great. Well, we sort of are. Anyways, we're not going to go down into this section at all because it's going to start the crate destruction script. Basically, if you see crates, how many crates are remaining, it means that you probably went too far. So we're going to shoot that missile out. Perfect. That means it hit a Ymir mech, so we're going to go ahead and switch to the Geth Plasma shotgun. Go ahead and put all of our ammo on, and in fact, we're going to put our party... Moving. 
over here into cover so that they do not go down and start this script themselves. We do not want them entering into this fight, basically. So we're going to wait and hope that... There it is. So we got our first Ymir mech. It's going to start coming. Basically going to pull them off individually without without ever even triggering the, the event to happen, which is pretty darn wild that you can do this but it is a trick that we can do uh to make our to make it a little bit easier on ourselves so we're gonna get into cover here make sure this ymir mech comes a little bit closer because i know we're a vanguard but we're not actually going to be able to do much get rid of its shields real quick watch out for its rockets and we're just gonna do this slowly All right, one Ymir mech down, and we're just going to repeat this process. Not get hit by it exploding, and we're going to repeat the process two more times, and we'll go ahead and call this second one in here as well. Let's hope that goes down. Wait for the sound. Perfect. I believe that means we hit one, so let's just go ahead and see if we can launch this. Good. And if it gets a little hairy for you, you can actually just use the shuttle as cover and kind of be totally fine. And now we can finally charge it and do the fight normally. Sometimes the charge will bug out because you're not supposed to be up here and it just acts weird, but we should be just fine. We're going to go ahead and do this and warp. And the second one is now dead, so all we have left is just the third one, and we haven't even activated the script. I do recommend this. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's also one of the only ways to guarantee you get the max reward. So, the third and final one, it's on its way, baby. And then once it gets here, you can fight it however you want. It's gonna blow! Right behind you. On your six. And with that, the third and final Ymir mech has fallen, which means we have completed the entire mission, uh, which is pretty dope. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of the cheese that was just employed. And we will get, because no crates were destroyed, we will get the max amount of rewards. But we're not done because there is actually stuff down here that we can grab. Like over here, there's this security systems that we can go ahead and access and we can grab, well, Nothing, really, but whatever. It's fine. We did it. And we can grab this med kit and some element zero. 500 element zero, in fact. And if we go all the way to the back to this rear landing platform that's over here, you'll see all these flipped vehicles. It looks like, looks like they definitely did some stuff, but we can go and grab even more, including these power cells over here, which, of course, it's just going to... It's not going to give us anything. I mean, it gave us heavy ammo, but look, who cares? We already... You know what I mean? But hey... At least we got it, and it's included, and it's fine. Unfortunately, there's no credits or anything that we can get, but an interesting little trivia is that as we pulled up to this, there's actually a gunship that pulls and leaves from this section right here, and if you're very, very fast and you know exactly where to shoot, you can actually hit it with the cane and it will be destroyed, which is really cool. It doesn't do anything. I just think it's neat. Anyways, let's end this mission here. We did it. So this is, like I said, this is actually something that speedrunners will do. Uh, they'll come here early because they need to trigger the next story event to happen. And it'll come really fast. 20 of the 20 crates were saved. Of course, it was cheese, but what are you going to do? 125 experience, and we got 7,500 total credits, which is the most that we could get on this entire mission. So that's awesome, and I'm, I'm very happy about it. It's actually 190 credits per crate. Um lost anyways so we were able to save them all and we got the 500 so first side quest is done and it looks like when we got back on the normandy we have another message nice work on deratar from cerberus command nice work we knew eclipse was hiding valuable cargo we've wired the credits into your account thank you appreciate you take your money the next thing we're going to do is head to omega where we are going to deliver the packages to ish and of course that means we're going to bring miranda and jacob with us not before we go and scan the Ploitari system, since we're already here in the Hourglass Nebula. And I would definitely recommend having some probes on you, because on the planet Xanthu, we have an anomaly that we can find. Thanks, Edie. So the way that you find missions when you're scanning a planet is you'll notice that there's an arrow 
and you can kind of start putting yourself towards there and a light will show up and we can go ahead and activate that probe and we'll find another mission that we could do this is actually a side quest alliance hotspot detected alliance sources request that all ships keep watch for signs of the missing freighter msv estevan vanco lost one year ago in this sector any data recovered that sheds light on its fate will be rewarded well I guess we should probably check that out. Life support is damaged, but capable of sustaining a skeleton crew. It's recommended to take extreme caution. And we don't need to worry about choosing a party for this or a loadout or anything because there's no combat whatsoever. This is just a experience and and uh, iridium and just scenery. And it's just beautiful. So we can actually go ahead and shoot this loose tile here. And we're going to need that later because that's going to be going to serve as a bridge for us to get around the yeah yeah no big deal it's just literally on a cliff it's fine it's fine I, oh no no it's fine listen guys it's fine oh no so yes the place is is falling apart it's don't worry about it it's fine so we wanted to make sure that we hit that and we'll notice that there's a few cases of iridium actually sitting around this place but we don't really have to worry about it it'll all kind of lead to where it is something that should be said about this mission though is this is actually another one that speedrunners will do because there is a glitch that works uh and it basically allows you to just walk right over to the mainframe that we need to access at the very end over there it just allows you to almost skywalk to it and then you kind of like punch and it it allows you to drop down to where it is and uh totally fine but we picked up a thing of iridium and we're gonna pick up another iridium there already have a thousand now this part can be a little funky and you need to get in a cover and then you can kind of jump up and cross this and there's another section here that gets a little weird where you actually need to go in a cover and then you can hop up uh, it doesn't allow you to do it in like one clean motion to hop up there and it's very very easy to get stuck on this level because of that spot right there and if you've done it i'm sure you've gotten stuck there so we're going to continue on watch out for the entire ship falling around us no big deal or anything and there is more iridium that we need to grab so we're going to continue this way and we're actually going to walk all the way around here. Look at how cool this is. This ship is just... Like, oh, man. You know what I mean? Oh, man. So if you sprint, it'll actually, like, stop you like that every so often. Uh, which isn't which isn't the best thing. Which isn't the best thing to happen. I'm sure Shepard's a little bit nervous doing this. Eh, maybe not. Shepard's, Shepard's kind of a badass. Anyways, we can come and grab this refined iridium as well, meaning we, we now have, what, 1,500 iridium just from this little si tiny side quest. And that's what I mean. It's like, whoop, 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 stairs, whoop, and there we go. Nice. That's not terrifying at all. Turn right back around. We can grab this iridium as well. Look at this. Guys, 2,000 iridium. We're already almost done with this side quest. That's how fast this is. All we have to do is come over here and access this mainframe and that's it side quest over friends as long as i can get across this beam and there we go let's go ahead and access this and see what happens Got off that baby just in time. Data retrieved and escaped the mission site. 125 experience, 7,500 credits, and 2,000 iridium. That means we got the most we could do from that side quest. And let's see if we have a personal message. An amazing find from Dr. Richard Talos, a curator of the Alliance Museum of Galactic Exploration. You have our thanks for recovering the data from the Estevanico. The data shows that the ship was attacked and overrun by blood pack mercenaries and Vorcha soldiers. According to data records, this was the first Alliance crew to encounter the Vorcha. How frightened they must have been. Well, that's very cool. Anyways, now, my friends, we're going to Omega. So, for this mission on Omega, the the conclusion of it anyways, we're going to pick a party of Miranda and Jacob. 
And we have a few different ways that we could go with the packages for Ish story. Obviously, it doesn't matter loadout or anything. We could go to Anto, who we know that these packages are actually about and kind of kind of creates a weakness in Arya's organization. We could go to Anto, and if we go to Anto and just give the packages to him without doing he's the Batarian that's on the right hand side of uh, Arya, or like, you know what I mean? Um, the stairs leading up to Arya. If we do that, we'll get five Paragon points, and that's it. We'll just get five Paragon points. Our Paragon points are maxed out at this point, so that's not really worth it. We could tell Anto to take care of Ish because Ish is trying to create issues, in which case we'll get uh, Renegade points. That's it, just Renegade. Or we can extort money from Anto, which will give us 40 experience, 2,250 credits, and five Renegade points. Okay, not a bad option. Or we could go to Ish and we have multiple choices that we could do there as well. We can just give him the packages since we have both of them. And we'll get 40 experience and 4,500 credits and five renegade points, which is the most rewarding solution that we have. Or we can convince Ish not to do this with this package, get out of here, therefore not weakening, um, not weakening the organization of Arya's at all, getting 40 experience and 3,375 credits and no morality points, uh, which I think is probably the better way to go. But then we're losing out on 1,200 credits. So let's just see what happens when we talk to Ish. Hello again, my friends. Please tell me you have something for me. So we have the option here. We can start if we just choose one of these, the package from Helium or the package from the Citadel. We'll give both of them away and therefore getting the max amount of stuff that we can receive from doing this mission. Or we can talk about how this how this data is bad and it's stolen and that issues in over his head and he needs to get out of here by either using a Paragon or a uh, Renegade uh, option. I think it is worth it to not weaken Arya's organization and to allow Ish to survive, which means we're going to convince him that he's in over his head. Yes, we lose basically, what, a, a, uh, 1,125 credits by doing it that way, but I think that's the way to go. Have you seen what's in these packages? Why? Did you find something untoward? Certainly nothing worth getting worked up about. This information could weaken Arya's organization. You better be sure it's safe before you take it anywhere. I'm touched. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. He's been doing this a long time. Why do you want information about one of Arya's men? It's not for me. A lot of people want to leg up on Arya, and they'll pay a lot of credits to get it. I knew you were up to something. Arya will find out what you're up to, Ish. I don't envy you when that happens. I... I think I can handle it. No one has beaten Arya in centuries. Once she casts down your clients, she'll come looking for you. You're right. I... I have to get out of here. Thank you, my friend. You probably just saved my life. Come on, Sal. We have to get out of here. That's better than he deserves. Yeah, I would agree with that, Jacob. So we'll get 40 experience, 3,375 credits. And I just think that that's the way to go. I really do. I thought that we got... I guess we don't get... There's no morality points for that one at all, that option. But I think it's just... I think that's just the way to go. And then if we look at our... Whoop! If we look at our journal now... Ish has been convinced to leave and just not to not to take down Arya, which Arya is a powerful ally. I see no reason to lose that, especially before Mass Effect 3, you know what I'm saying? And with that, that means that we're done on Omega. We've bought everything from all of the shops. We've gotten pretty much everything that we can here. So it's time to leave and tackle another side quest. And the next in seven mission that we're going to tackle is Lost Operative. A lost Cerberus operative is believed to be held in an eclipse base on planet Loric, back in the Fathar system, which uh, is on in the Omega Nebula. Great! So we can leave Omega. We're already in that system. Look at how luckily that worked out. And we'll head to the Father system. Father system. Anyways, and then once we get there, we're going to scan and do everything that we can so that we get 100% completion. It's a tiny place. And the final planet that we can scan in the Father system is Loric. And Loric does have the anomaly that we're looking for. It's also a rich planet, so feel free to scan this place like crazy. Launching the probe. Scans have found something. 
Signal scans detect a transmitter matching Cerberus encryption. It's registered to an unknown deep cover operative. Well, looks like they're being held on that Eclipse base. We should probably find them. So let's finish our scanning and then let's land. I think we're ready to do it. So we want to bring people on this mission that are good at dealing with shields and barriers. And guess who fits that bill so well? Garrus and Miranda. We'll go ahead and bring the Firestorm with us, just for funsies. It doesn't actually matter what we choose. And let's land. Place reminds me a ton of the early levels of Vermeer for some reason. Now, there is actually Platinum that we can get right here as we are... Uh, dropped off and we could actually miss that if we go up this ramp too quickly you'll totally end up missing that we don't want that to happen we want to get as much resources and things that we can get so we're going to go ahead and just put uh incendiary ammo onto this and continue on it looks like we have to recover stolen data and immediately taken down some eclipse soldiers which shouldn't be too hard taking down this vanguard it looks like he barely even survived for even a second more eclipse coming in which we don't have to worry too much about because we're awesome and they are not so we'll go ahead and charge this one and we'll have a vanguard that we're gonna go ahead and warp the barriers up and then we can go ahead and charge take her out real quick this is a fairly easy mission when it comes to the amount of enemies that you'll fight the way that they fight and everything else so we'll go ahead and we will access these security logs after we bypass this giving us 375 credits and now we can access these security logs looks like interrogator corporal Giro has been uh tyrone rawlings eclipse targeted agent rawlings some time ago we know rawlings is connected to the encrypted data we acquired the data could conclusively prove cerberus's involvement in rachni experiences uh experiments Agent Rowling's proved difficult to capture, having insinuated himself on a ship bound for the Attican Traverse. He had won over the loyalty of the ship's crew, who believed him to be on a human dignitary. Our own ma agents managed to disable the ship and hobble its defenses. And the subject has been interrogated, but it has failed. They do have encrypted data that sounds like it's telling them exactly what they need to know. Now, do we care if anybody has any data that might make Cerberus look like the bad guy? No, of course not. Do we want to still pretend like we're on their side? Yeah. And we'll go ahead and encounter the boss, if you will, of this level, Mori. Let's go ahead and charge, get our shields back, and we can start dumping into Mori as quickly as possible. And go ahead and charge again, get our shields back. And we're going to go ahead and actually switch to the Firestorm here and see if we can finish off Mori. Bye, Mori. If we look where this side over here, it looks like there is some stuff over here that we can find. Including some refined platinum that we can pick up. 800 of it. No doubt. You'll love to see it. And on the other side here, where the initial enemies first came out, we can go in there and grab a med kit and bypass this wall safe for 3,750 credits. So let's go ahead and continue on and see if we can find this Tyrone Rawlings, this Cerberus operative who is under deep cover. Apparently, data that proves that Cerberus was working on Rachni experiments has been there. And we, I mean, we found that. We knew that was happening. So let's go ahead and bypass this door. See if we can find this guy. Hopefully find them still alive. Well, this ain't looking good. Go ahead and access these data logs. Well, we have a couple options now. We can upload that data to the Alliance. We can upload that data to Cerberus. Or we can recover that data for ourselves. I like having power. Data received. 
And just like that, the mission is complete. Cerberus operative Tyrone Rawlings was found dead. Encrypted data transmitted to Normandy for decryption and storage. We get 125 experience, and here is where this is lying to us yet again. We did not get 78, uh, 7,800 credits. We got 7,500 credits, um, and it's just a fix. It's just like a bug. And we get 2,000 platinum as well for that mission. And we'll have another Commander, private message that we can grab. Operative data filed. This one is actually from Edie. She has logged and begun decryption of the data we've recovered. Uh, preliminary searches show that this information pertains to illicit operations in which Cerberus was involved over the past five years. Should this information be re released, it could severely hinder Cerberus's abilities to operate openly in the galaxy. Take, you, take her a year or more to completely decrypt this information. Now, we could have given that to the Alliance, but who knows what they would do with it. Who knows where Cerberus uh, has infiltrated when it comes to that. So, so we wanted to save that for ourselves. Now, the only other assignments that we currently have are Overlord, which is the DLC, which we will be tackling very, very soon. Arrival and Citadel found Forged ID, which we can't actually finish until we have done Thane's loyalty mission, uh, which on that, everybody has a loyalty mission in our party right now that is left, just the four of them. Tally is not going to be done anytime soon until after we get the reaper iff in fact so we're not going to worry too much about that so let's go ahead and scan some more planets and see where our next objective is so leaving the fahar system we're going to go ahead and head to the kyra vimori and just go ahead and start 100 percenting these galaxies these galaxies you know what i mean these systems jeez louise now, lucky for us, we're not really in a place where we need to scan for a bunch of resources, so we can kind of do a quick little pass. It is worth mentioning that almost all of the planets in this system are, in fact, rich. Actually, all three of them are rich. So, let's go ahead to Aaron Larkin, and that is the final cluster that we can find in the Omega Nebula. So, let's see what's in here. One planet. One planet. Just Utha, which, by the way, is a rich planet. So, yeah, come here and, and do that. Look at around the sun, it looks crazy. So that is everything in the Omega Nebula that we can get. We have 100%ed this entire area. How awesome is that? Next, we're going to head to the Shriek Abyssal System, where we actually are able to access this because of a star chart that we got very early on from Helium. And we're gonna go ahead and investigate because there is actually an N7 mission that we will find here. Also, just absolutely love the look of this planet. I just wanted to point that out. It just looks awesome. And on Zeta Band, we will be able to find an anomaly, which, and not to mention a rich planet. So let's go ahead and find the anomaly very quickly. All right. Well, we found the anomaly. Let's see what's going on on Zeta Band. Scans show a crude base established on the planet's surface. Communications match known blood pack mercenary protocols. Numerous life signs matching Vorcha genealogy detected. Looks like we're going to go ahead and land here and hopefully take down some blood pack scum. For this mission, I recommend bringing Morden for his incinerate and for uh, Miranda for warp because we are, of course, going to be dealing with some Krogan in Vorcha. It is the blood pack after all, my friends. I would also highly recommend doing this mission because we're going to get something very, very cool for completing it, so keep that in mind. I am detecting a large power source inside the base. It is probable that destroying it would disrupt the entire facility. Hmm. Good to know. We can also read this data pad. Kalosk, you'll get your resources when they're good and ready. You want to come mine these rocks yourself? Everything will be ready for the attack. If you'd got me the additional Vorcha, it wouldn't have been done by now. Interesting. Well, it looks like we have our job cut out for us. Go ahead and switch to our badass assault rifle. Continue on into the base here. But before we do that, we are, of course, going to want to pick up this refined palladium. And... This data pad. Sending back two of the Vorcha you sent me so that you can see what I'm dealing with out here. I suggest you not arm these morons. These piss poor shots are more likely to blast the broadside of one of our generators than hit their intended targets. Generators, huh? Well, let's continue down. See if we can take this place down proper. Seeing a lot of cover, which means Vorcha have arrived. 
But we can easily take them down with the power of the Matic. Get that behind as well. And we can actually charge down into these guys. Not the worst decision. And go ahead. Hello? See if we can finish this boom squad enemy before he explodes. And by coming down here, we can pick up another refined palladium. We can also... Unfortunately, we can't charge up there, but we took them down pretty quickly. We're going to watch out. Morden looking a little bit low. See if we can take out this blood pack trooper. You can see the uh, power of that assault rifle. Am I still getting shot? What are you doing? Just sit down. Jeez Louise. Anyways, there's a data pad here yet again. Some of my Vorcha have gone missing. I need more if you expect us to get this work done on schedule. I don't care how you get them. Ask Garm for his extras. He has to have some cast-offs that are good enough for mining duty. Except for that we know that Garm has actually been taken down now because of us. Not only has Garm been taken down, but the actual leader of the entire blood pack has been taken down. And we did that during an earlier mission. So let's go ahead and open this kit. During, uh... Morden's loyalty mission. We were able to take down the leader of the blood pack. But we'll go ahead and kill these Vorcha anyways. Because they apparently did not get the memo that they don't have a boss anymore. We do need to be a little bit careful as we proceed because we're going to be dealing with a ton of different enemies. And unfortunately... Okay, there we go. Uh, there was actually a pyro in the back there that was taken down and I'm not entirely sure how. I believe potentially it was by our boy Garrus's, uh, or we don't have Garrus. I don't know what just killed that guy to be totally honest with you. But we'll continue on. And there's actually a couple of enemies that were up here but the rest of our team actually took them down which you love to see. We can also grab this med kit right here for 100 credits. And then we can continue, whoops, on this way. That pyro somehow being taken out was super useful. He can get in there very quickly and take you down without even realizing that that's what happened. So let's go to that door where the pyro actually came out of. And proceed further into this blood pack base. Like, what are they even doing over here? Like, what are you guys doing? You're defeated. Apparently not, as we come face to face with Kulask, the person that we've been reading about, the Krogan we've been reading about, in these uh, these missions here, switching over to the Locust SMG so that we can take down his shield. We're going to go ahead and charge. Unfortunately, not able to charge right now. And now we can charge and hopefully put some good points into this. Charging yet again. Unfortunately, the Krogan becoming... There we go. Now we can actually target him. Hopefully, get our shields back. Overload very quickly. Incinerate. Get that heavy incinerate from our boy Morden. Keep cruising into this Krogan. Taking him out as he goes. Look at how badass he looks with that armor. As we absolutely shred this Krogan. He charges at us. We charge at him. We ignore some rockets to the face from this Boom Squad member. And there you go. Just like that. We have defeated potentially the remnants of the blood pack and what's what what's left of them after we kind of destroy their entire operation. So we'll go ahead and just destroy these containment cells. Looks fun to do, anyways. Picking up the refined palladium that we can see in the back. Just taking a closer look. Morden giving us some advice here. We want to destroy all of these containment cells. And then, Come on, we, need to leave. we need to get out of here. I think we got everything that we can get. It's time to go. Looks like this place is about to explode. Yeah. Yep. It sure does. So, let's get out of here. We can use this. Just like that, the mission is completed. So, like I said, super easy to do some of these side quests. They're very fast and very rewarding because you might notice something, my friends. And that 
is that we now have another heavy weapon ammo upgrade plus 90% heavy weapon ammo capacity, which is huge. 7,500 credits for doing that, 2,000 palladium, and 125 experience. Let's go ahead and research that right away so we can max out the amount of heavy weapon ammo that we can have in this game, actually with the certain setup allowing us to fire the cane twice now if we were to put use that armor. So we'll go to prototypes, six out of six heavy weapon ammo. I believe that is the most that we can get in the entire game. So that's pretty darn cool. Six out of six. Leaving the Zicha system, we're gonna head to Urla Rost and get 100% completion there as well. And that is the only two clusters that we can find in the Shriek Abyssal. Worth mentioning that this entire system basically belongs to the Volus, and this planet Talus Fia was actually an incredibly wealthy planet. That time is no longer there, but there are still some Volus businesses on Talus Fia. And the last planet that we can look at, Dawes Atab. It's just a nice giant. And just like that, the Shriek Abyssal system is 100% completed. But we're gonna head over to the Crescent Nebula where we can actually see that we have another in seven mission to disable the Blood Pack Relay. We've already dealt them a few blows. Let's finish them off. So we'll head to the system of Lusarn. Of course, we can find the mineral rich planet of Untanta here in this system. And the place that we actually need to head to is Terith to disable the Blood Pack Relay. Of course, we can find a, uh, a anomaly that we're going to need to scan here. And also this place is a Chlorine Swamp. And also a rich planet. A rich planet, by the way, which also has element zero on it. Something on our sensors. Preliminary scans indicate a high-powered communications relay on this planet. A concentration of Krogan and Vorcha signals are massed inside what appears to be a mining operation. Let's go ahead and land, see if we can take them down. Yet again, choosing a party of Morden and Miranda, as I think they'll both be very useful with Incinerate and Warp, respectively. Switching to the Blackstorm Singularity Projector for funsies. Let's do it! Look at how cool this planet looks. Looks dangerous. Looks wonderful. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy this. And be prepared to fight a ton of blood pack and clicksin in this mission, as we will be seeing a lot of them. As we proceed over here, we'll see that there's a what beacon. Here? Hmm. Problematic. Indeed. We can also use this data pad here. Stop chipping away at this node. There's nothing left to your mind. Move on. Yet again, a name that we've recognized. Let's go ahead and activate this beacon here. Looks like it will lead us to where we need to go. Activating a second beacon here. Proceeding with caution. Uh oh. Enemies in front. And. Just like that, our first Klixen has approached. Look at that. Easy. Let's go ahead and activate this. Now, you may remember the Klixen from our boy Grunt's loyalty mission. Looks like there was actually a hidden passage here where we can go ahead and take some raw material for 400 platinum. Continue finding... These other beacons leading us through this chlorine swamp. Take a deep breath, I dare you. And we'll see a harvester off in the distance, which means we're going to be dealing with yet more clicksin. Immediately, you'll see that we ate that armor, going ahead and warping them. I'm not too worried about keeping them at bay. I'd rather just kill them quickly. You know what I mean? And of course, don't forget, we also have the incredible power of Reeve now. Very useful against these enemies. like there's a little bit of a pathway up here. Let's see if we can find anything useful. 
Why were they here? Looks like we're going to pick up another beacon here. Let's activate that. Use this data pad. Fall back. Evacuation shuttles are on the way. Anyone not at the gathering site will be left here with those damned bugs. Uh-oh. Also, just heading back a little bit, making sure that we pick up anything that we can. There should be more resources that we can actually find here. These raw materials for another 400 platinum. Incoming. And another Klixen that apparently we'll need to take down real quick. The power of Reeve coming in clutch against Klixen. Anyways, let's head back to where we just were, where we activated that fourth beacon. Look at how cool this place looks. Oh my gosh. Grab this thermal clip if we need it, which we sure do. Miranda pointing out that some big fight just happened. Heading to the left here, even though we know we need to go to that beacon there. See if there's more resources. Another harvester landing in front of us. So close. But we can go ahead and grab this raw material. Another 400 platinum. And see if we can head back and take down some clicks in that were inevitably just dropped off to try to fight us, those sons of guns. Heads up. Luckily, we can murder these incredibly quickly. Go ahead and activate this beacon as well while we're here. Reeve to take them down. Miranda apparently deciding she wants to go in and fight them. We'll go ahead and slam this one onto the ground. Of course, the neural attack that Morden has, even better at dealing with some of these enemies. Let's go ahead and actually warp charge and take this thing out no problem of course we can find another data pad here i can't get any more vorcha from omega garm has his own problems so you're gonna have to man up and deal with this on your own maybe build a beacon path i bet those damn vorcha are just wandering out in the fog getting lost unfortunately they're wrong the Klixen have destroyed them all we have another path up here it looks like we can take Leading us slightly out of the fog. Let's see if there's anything below. Before we head up there, maybe we can find something. Another raw material for another 400 platinum. And now, we can continue up the path and out of this damnable swamp. Shrek, where are you? I'm sure... Coming soon, we're going to have to deal with some Vorcha, who, surprisingly, are easier than dealing with Klixen. Right here, we can activate this beacon. It seems to have fallen. So spooky, this entire level. So spooky. I actually love it, though. Like, I love the close quarters, like, little corridors that we have to walk down to see what's going on. So much better, if you remember, than some of the exploration that we had to do in Mass Effect 1. Trouble ahead. Taking down these clicks in, we'll go ahead and reeve this one. Taking down the armor of that one. And neural shocking it. Allowing us to eliminate it very, very quickly. Our friends, of course, getting caught on fire. But let's see if there's anything down this path as well. This just so happens to be a thing that happens a lot in this, this particular mission. We'll find a dead body. Where are the resources? This is from Kalusk, who we just take, took down on that last mission. Our guy on Elium can't keep the lights off forever. Uh-oh. The beacon heading over there, which means, of course, that there's bound to be something over here that we can grab. Another beacon, it looks like. Looks like it all turns around. So let's go check over on this side first before we continue over. Activate this beacon as well, which is going to lead us to the next destination, which was actually behind us. But you know how it is. We have more fortune to deal with. We're going to go ahead and charge because we also have a boom squad member that looks like to be attacking us. Well, we killed them awfully quick. Let's go ahead and get that platinum. 
more platinum. I love how we get 400 refined platinum. It's the same amount that we get from ones that are already like a raw. It whatever. What? It's fine. Anyways, we'll continue on this way. We've gotten everything that we can over here. So we need to go to where the next beacon is pointing us. Heading up this path, activating this beacon as well. And I'm sure we're about to run into another blood pack leader. Probably waiting for us, getting ready to take us down. Maybe now's not the worst time, although I do hear a harvester. Maybe now's not the worst time to switch to the Black Storm Singularity projector. See if maybe we can do some damage to inevitably a ton of enemies, including Solomul, the Krogan himself. We're going to go ahead and pop these. Sending those out, keeping them locked down as long as we possibly can with the Black Storm Singularity Projector, which is going to do some damage. And then we'll go ahead and charge Salamul ourselves and just keep these projectors rocking as his armor goes. There's no reason not to. We're going to go ahead and incinerate and warp, almost completely eliminating Salamul's armor. Hopefully that Singularity Projector able to take him out. See him flying in the air over there. It looks like we were able to destroy him. Oh, no. Is he dead? It looks like we... Did you guys see that? That was amazing. Well, whatever. It counts. Let's go ahead and bypass the communication terminal and end this little side quest. I broke that. <laughs> Encountered unclassified hostile alien species. That was clicks in. We know that. 125 experience and another heavy weapon ammo upgrade. Interesting. And 7,500 credits and 2,000 platinum. Looks like we just got our seventh and final heavy weapon ammo upgrade. Uh, I thought there was seven and then I heard there was six. So I just got confused. Let's go ahead and let's research that right away. Now we have maxed out Kane, baby. That's what I thought. There's not seven. It, I don't, I don't know why that happens. That's what I thought. There isn't seven, it's six. That is actually a bug that happens with that, is that sometimes you'll get that heavy weapon ammo thing, but you didn't actually get it. Anyways, we're gonna head to Undeste as well and see if we can 100% that cluster. And nothing here except for just a couple heavy, uh, rich planets. But we are running low on fuel and we still have one more system that we need to check out. So instead of going all the way there, because we simply don't have enough fuel, we're going to go here and buy some more and then head to the final cluster that we can in this area. And on the planet Helheim, which is a post-garden world that once enjoyed an Earth-like oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere, uh, we will find another anomaly. This place was actually completely destroyed, and a lot of the theories for that lead to uh, an out-of-control biological weapon. So landing is strictly prohibited. Let's see what that means for us. Also worth mentioning that we will find a ton of Element Zero on Helheim here, as well as mercenary activity de uh, detected inside a mining facility. Uh, the facility was confirmed registered, and it looks like Eclipse are here, so let's see what that's about. And after getting a couple thousand of our uh of of our element zero we can actually finally land on this planet and we are going to be dealing with a ton of eclipse which means barriers and shields and stuff like that so we want to make sure we build a party that can handle that which of course is going to be garris and miranda as always because they're just really good at dealing with those types of enemies let's do it
go ahead and switch away from the <laughs> heavy weapon. We don't need that out right now. Switching to our rifle, and let's actually switch to the plasma shotgun as well, because we are, like I said, going to be dealing with a ton of shields and barriers on this mission. Looks like we'll be finding our way into the facility here. Go ahead and activate this cargo computer. Find this shipping log. Cargo ship Terra Allen docked and received a large shipment of resources. All right. Doesn't look like there's anything over here, but you never know. Worth looking. Looks like we're going to head into the facility itself here. Where I'm sure, no doubt. <sighs> yep. We're going to find some enemies that need to be taken down just a little bit. So let's go ahead and warp this one. I mean, uh, overload that one. Warp that one. Go ahead and charge. Get that guy out of here. And focus taking down the vanguard. And there should be another one over here as well. I don't even know what that guy was doing, but we're going to go ahead and take him out. Get him meleeed. And there we go. Looks like we're investigating this eclipse presence here. See if there's anything else. Garrus, what's up, man? Your armor looks so good. I just want you to know that. You're just you're just a beautiful man now. A beautiful, beautiful man. But we're going to head this way before we bypass that door. Because as we can see, there is palladium over here that we can grab. Some refined palladium. We'll also see that this thing is uh, spinning. Doesn't do anything, but thought I would point that out. Anyways, we want to go and bypass this door now. And we'll find that there's a PDA here that we can examine to find out what happened here. We are under mercenary attack. Escort civilians to crew quarters, then return to the work area to protect the main computer at all costs. Well, doesn't look like that ended up look working too well for them. And of course, that means we're going to be now fighting a ton more of Eclipse mercenaries. I wish that... I just wish that sometimes... That sometimes charge would work the way it's supposed to. Watch out for this heavy that's on top here. See if we can get a charge off on this heavy as well, which we were able to do immediately sending it flying out of the battlefield here. And we'll go ahead and start taking some more enemies down as well. Go ahead and destroy this Solarian that's attacking us. Go ahead and charge here. And I mean, you know, when you've been dealing with Shadow Broker goons and, and these, I mean, these guys appear like they're nothing now. You know what I mean? We don't even need, we could just melee things to death and call it a day, throw it away. We don't need to worry about nothing. Look at how clean, clean. And if we head up over here, there's actually a med kit that we can grab. And get that free hundred credits because like I always say, it all adds up, baby. Which should be over on this platform here, back where the heavy was attacking us. We kind of charged up here and got there. Oh no, I'm stuck. There we go. <laughs> the power of charging. You forget that there's lips that you can move and find. We're going to continue this way. Grab these thermal clips. Make sure we are as full as we can be. Because it looks like we're probably going to be dealing with some more enemies. We have a bridge control here that we can use. However, I would recommend before using that bridge control... We're going to head over here and hack this real quick, this mainframe. And we will find this encrypted data, which we're going to decrypt. And now that this is encrypting, we're going to go ahead and wait for these guys to show up. More enemies are about to appear on the other side of this. And we're just going to go ahead and hopefully teach them some manners. Warping this vanguard. Now, we could charge over there. I just don't really think that that's necessary. Now, you may notice there's also palladium over there. We're going to go ahead and get into cover here while that gets finished. And this guy as well. And more enemies are going to start appearing now. And they can alternate, actually, from coming over on this side here or coming from over there. Fortunately for us, it looks like they actually decided to show up over there. So we're going to see if we can uh, overload them. And perfect time because these guys are going to cluster up. We can hopefully send a singularity over there or a black storm which is going to do a ton of damage almost entirely eliminating them from the fight we'll go ahead and finish this go oh, well don't need to do that when my team does 
finishing the vanguard as more enemies are now coming in including two vanguards and some troopers so we'll go ahead and start overloading and captain varleon appears to have well appeared So we'll just take them out as quickly as we can from afar while watching out for the captain, who is this Solarian that's attacking us right now. We're going to go ahead and start overloading his shields, hopefully taking down this Vanguard before this Vanguard becomes a problem. And this is an engineer, of course, because Solarian, who's going to hit us with incinerates and a few other things. But we're going to go ahead, take down his armor, and now we can charge in and just absolutely eliminate Captain Vorleon. Looks like he actually... Uh well, he fell. <laughs> and the decrypting is complete, which is awesome. We can destroy this little container here. We don't need it. And over in this corner, we can actually find some power cells. We did use some heavy ammo, but not a huge deal. We'll go ahead and pick that up and just get that. I would have rathered the 100 credits, but it is what it is. Now we can actually go and use that bridge control before examining this mainframe. Go ahead and use this, which is going to start the bridge, and then we can come over here and grab this refined palladium. So, all that's left is to head back to this mainframe and see what we got from it. The dec decrypted data is incomplete. Further details are required to trace the Terra Alon's location. The data has been sent to Cerberus for further analysis. And we get 7,500 credits, and we can end the mission here. Covered data referring to the Terralon's location. We get 125 experience and 15,000 credits and 4,000 palladium. It is worth mentioning that we would know that that mission actually exists because on the Citadel and, and Ilium, we can actually hear uh, a newscast talking about the Terralon and how it crashed on uh, on the Dranek system. So we still don't have any new messages or anything like that, but I'm sure there is more that we can do in this system that we're in. Zeline, of course, is 100% completed, which means so is the entire Crescent Nebula. However, there are some things on Helium that we can go purchase, so let's go get that done real quick. All the way in the transport area of this air, of the Helium, we can go ahead and go to the Gateway Personal Defense, where finally we can afford some of these things, and I highly recommend buying as much as we possibly can. Now, we're kind of broke, we don't have that much money, but we can buy the Heavy Skin Weave, which means Shepard gets 30 health. We could get the Damage Protection uh, Squad Bonus 50% to Shields, Barriers, and Armors, which of course is better than the health because of the way that we fight. And then we do have the option of doing either sub submachine machine gun damage, assault rifle damage, or heavy skin weave right now. Heavy skin weave is actually going to be a little bit useful because it's going to lead to more research that we can do. So let's go ahead and let's grab that, that one for now. Meaning we're now broke. We only have 36,000, so we can't really grab anything else. But we can head back to the Normandy and research this stuff. And back on the Normandy, we can now go and research all of that stuff that we just bought. Now, we do have some more big upgrades, obviously, on... Helium, which is pretty much the last shop in the game that we can still buy stuff from. We still have a tech damage upgrade, biotic damage upgrade, the assault machine gun or uh, assault rifle damage increase, and the submachine gun damage increase. So those four are just like a lot of money. So we'll see. Hopefully we get there. But anyways, we can go ahead and research this heavy mess muscle weave. Shepard's melee attack is now more powerful. The only reason we're able to do that now is because we just got that heavy skin weave, uh, which allows us to now do that. Now we only have two more powers left. So we are looking very upgraded. We've done a bunch of different side quests, and I think, my friends, that's going to do it for today's episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. It's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of side quests. But I think that it's now time that we tackle some of the loyalty missions that we have left, which means Thane, Jacob, and Jack. 
I forgot who the third person was, but it's those three that we're going to do before we do pretty much anything else. I'm also going to be doing the Overload D Overlord DLC, which is a problematic DLC, but I'm going to be doing it before we tackle the Reaper IFF. Pretty much everything in the game needs to be done before we do the Reaper IFF, so this is it. This is why we're doing stuff like this. We're going to have more episodes that are going to be uh, kind of finishing up and doing all the N7 missions that we possibly can, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that you enjoyed those future episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, sincerely appreciate you. Huge shout-out to those of you watching the premieres. Even bigger shout-out to those of you supporting the channel over on Patreon.com. Uh, wouldn't be able to do this without you. I sincerely appreciate you. I hope you're loving the series. And remember, never give up, never surrender to the Blood Pack. Bye, everyone.